What? What is this? Let me help you up. If you stay down there long enough, people will start to think you're part of the scenery. Trespassing in a restricted zone is an act of treachery. The only punishment fit for someone betraying their own home is death. You would look just like your father did. Destined child. Mama? False prophecy. Speak. Awaken. Huh? I'm trying to nap. <laughs> I awoke with a start. What was with that dream? <sighs> I feel like that's not the first time either. Everything felt kind of hazy, and I could barely recall what it was about. I curled my body from the I uncurled my body from the forest floor and started to take notice of my surroundings. Rays of light of bright light shone between the tree branches, bringing a slight warmth to my face. It felt nice after the cold wind from last night. The air felt crisp, which must be a sign it's still early. What? Oh, it's so pretty. When I finally started looking around me, I noticed something strange. I was surrounded by beautiful flowers, kinds I'd never seen before. When did these get here? Last night was just so dark. Were they here before? They couldn't have been, but isn't it a little strange for them to be around me in a circle? We gave birth to flowers. <laughs> I let out a sigh. Uh, what's with all of these strange things happening to me? The weird pain I had in the town square just yesterday, the dreams that I can only half remember, not to mention the markings on my arm. I raised my arm up to the sky, inspecting it closely in the sunlight. I traced the symbols gently with my fingertips. It's definitely the same symbols from the book I brought with me. What is it trying to tell me? I absentmindedly played with the flowers that surrounded me whilst recalling the events of yesterday. I need to find someone that can read these markings. But there's no way I'll be able to sneak back into Aurelia Cavella. I pulled the book out and flickered through some of the other pages. Most of them were readable, but relatively unimportant. Charts, lists, budgets. But these two pages, the royal bloodline and the one that matched my markings, written in an unknown language. I looked back at the family tree, Everyone knows the monarchy unexpectedly ended around 20 years ago, but the reasons why weren't widely known or disclosed. I checked over the names again. King Xi'an and Sid Cam. What is a Sid Cam? Why does the bloodline only start 500 years ago? And then Prince Caspian, the final name. 37 years ago, under it, a signature barely legible. Lucius. He could still be alive. He might be able to tell me what this marking means. If only I knew where he was. Uh -huh. I suddenly realized just how hungry I was. I guess the last time I ate any food was yesterday. I tried to swallow, but my throat felt all dry and scratchy. I'm seriously thirsty. I searched my pockets, but I didn't have anything to eat with me. Finally, I got up and stretched my shoulders out. I'd give up anything, or I'd give anything to sleep on a bed instead of the ground again. First task today, find water. Easier said than done, of course. I glanced at the trees around me, but I had no clue which way I came from last night. I'll just have to pick a direction and hope for the best. I brushed the dirt off of my clothes and started my hike to find water. By now, the sun was high above, shining brightly. It warmed my chilly body and calmed my mind. Compared to last night, the forest wasn't even half as terrifying. Sunlight filtered through the green leaves above, leaving interesting patterns all over the ground. The moss grew over the, most, over the moist tree trunks and roots, making everything look fuzzy and warm. I could hear the faint tweeting of birds up in the canopy. Instead of scary, it was actually kind of beautiful. The only sound I could hear was my own breathing and twigs breaking under my boots. It was peaceful, 
even serene when the sun was up. Without noticing, I was slowing my pace, taking in the scenery and enjoying the atmosphere. Everything that happened last night felt like a dream. Wild flowers littered the ground where I was walking, so I tried to avoid stepping on them. I leant down and picked one to bring with me. I kept walking at my own pace like this for a while, before I was hit with a foul stench that quickly overpowered the fresh smell of flour in my hand. It was kind of like off meat mixed with something sickeningly sweet. I kept walking and it kept getting stronger. What is that? In the distance, I could see some kind of cloth jutting out from under a bush. The closer I got, the more overpowering the smell was. It looked like some kind of knapsack. Could there be food in there? Water? Something I could use out here? I tried to pull it out from under the bushes, but it must have been stuck in the branches. I grabbed on with both of my hands and gave it one big pull. Whoa! Ugh. It came out easily when I used all of my weight but I pulled so hard I fell backwards onto my butt. The smell was suddenly so sickening that I couldn't help but gag. When I looked down at my nap, at my lap, the knapsack sat between my legs and I could feel something wet touching my leg. I reached down to grab it. Whatever it was, it was stone cold and slightly damp. I bet it's a head. I don't know why, but I feel like it's a severed head for some reason. What, what is it? I held my breath, but the stench completely overwhelmed my senses. Three, two, one. Slowly, I wrapped my hand around it and with a final surge of courage pulled it into view. No. I could feel all the blood instantly drain from my face. I threw it as far as I could, but I could still see it poking out from the bushes. I scrambled away as fast as possible trying to put some distance between myself and that thing. No. No. Was it a head? No. This isn't happened. I turned away quickly and my stomach lurched. The bag wasn't stuck in the bushes. It was stuck in someone's arm and I just pulled it right off. We found a body. I brought my hand to my chest, the feeling of my heartbeat in my palm, the only thing that making this feels real. I gagged again, this time much more violently than before. It was just lucky my stomach was still empty. <laughs> Be thankful for the supplies, boy. There's no way. This couldn't be happening to me. Just yesterday, I was living a normal life, safe and happy. How did it come to this? I glanced back in the direction I threw it. It hadn't moved. It's a dead body, dude. No wonder it's not moving. An arm. A decomposing human arm. Who would be out here? I can't think of anyone wanting to leave Aurelia Cavella. No one leaves. I've never even heard of anyone else being expelled. Then, have there have others been outcasts like I was? How long had the body been here? Another wave of nausea washed over me. I could feel the moisture in my hands. The slimy mucus left a brown sludge all over my palms. I rubbed my hands on the ground until they were red raw, but the stains weren't going anywhere. Why won't it come off? Get off, please get off! I scrubbed and scrubbed, and even though you couldn't see it anymore, I could still feel it. It felt disgusting. The pangs of hunger I felt only a, mo a few moments ago were completely gone. Well, problem solved. Thank the gods I hadn't found anything to eat yet. I would have instantly lost it. I couldn't move. There had to have been a reason it was out here, so far from Aurelia Cabela. But why? Who? No. What could have done this to them? I glanced back towards the bushes from behind my bangs. There were arms, but... What about the rest of them? I don't want to find out. I have to get out of here. I le I leapt back to my feet, spun around, and sped away, giving no notice to the knapsack I left in the garden. Bitch, get the knapsack! Oh my God, we're we're kind of stupid. <sighs> kind of stupid. I could still feel it. 
When I looked down at my hands, there was nothing, but I could still feel it. No matter where I looked, I felt like it was still there, almost watching me. The sound it made when I ripped the bag from the bushes, it echoed through my mind. Wait, what's that? Is that water? I could definitely hear a faint trickling nearby. I quickened my pace and burst out from the trees in a flurry of leaves. Oh my god, it's water. water. I was met with a river. On both sides, the banks were littered with colorful array of trash, clothing, and various odds and ends. I barely noticed, though. All that mattered is that I could get clean and drink. Without any thought, I kicked off my clothes and stripped down to my underwear as I ran towards the water's edge. I launched myself from the bank directly into the river. Who cares about what underwear? It has been non-stop calls the second I started work. Oh, Abu, we- I'm sorry. I remember last night you're like, I won't have any meetings, and now you have to work. I'm so sorry, Abu. If it helps, we learn that, um, we're in a Wattpad. <laughs> the shallow water came up to my waist. It was cool. Chat. Chat, do you see what I see? Do, do you see what- do, do, do you see what I see? There's someone there watching us bathe. Oh my god. Um, anyway. It was cool and refreshing against my sweaty skin. Finally water. I kept scrubbing at my arms, hands, and legs until they were red raw. It felt like I was rubbing away the memories from earlier. <laughs> the fucking side eyes, Chad. Once I was satisfied with that, I moved my hair. The sweat and grease from yesterday was already building up. <sighs> that feels better already. My head instantly whipped up towards the opposite bank. Uh. Uh. <gasps> mm -hmm. On the opposite bank stood a young blue-haired boy with a completely dumbfounded look on his face. His arms were full of a multitude of items. Before I could open my mouth, he turned and ran away. Why are you watching me, babe? I bolted back from my clothes and took off in the same direction I last saw the boy. As I ran, I could still hear the distinct sound of leaves and sticks crunching in front of me. At least that means he's not far. The ground here looked like it had been used all the time. It formed what could almost be called a path. He must have come this way a lot. Between the trees, I caught a glimpse of his blue locks. Soon, more of his figure came into view as I gained on him. Hey, wait, please! He obviously wasn't going to wait. He was close enough now that I could almost touch him. I reached out to grab him, but only managed to brush my fingertips against his back. This might be my only chance. I can't risk him getting away. With the last of my energy, I leapt towards him. Oh my! Hey! <laughs> oh my god! Smash! <laughs> Hello! How do I remove the text? How do I remove the text? How do I move this? How do I how do I make this gone, chat? How do I help? Oh! I said wait! I tackled the boy to the ground and held him there, my arms either side of his head, my lungs burnt from the chase. The boy below me looked terrified. His body was shaking underneath mine. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to talk. He suddenly turned bright red. He wasn't looking at my face, though. When I followed his gaze, he was looking somewhere lower. Hey, yo! When I realized, then I realized I hadn't gotten dressed yet. <clears throat> Look at him blushing. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. What's the, what's my keybind? It's this. <laughs> no, we're not getting clothes on. Oh, hi, Moose Puppy. Yes, I know I'm going feral. Arf! Uh, I, uh, I didn't, I mean... 
Um. Oh my god. I could finally see the boy up close. His pale blue hair was feathered around him, and his silvery eyes were wide and scary. When his lips trembled, he looked like he could cry at any moment. He seemed fragile. Breakable? Bitch, we're gonna break him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bottom. He's a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Forget submissive and breedable. Give me submissive and shovable. Found another shovable character. I'm freaking out, chat. I'm freaking out. His face was slowly getting wetter the longer I lent my soggy hair over him. I'm so so- Are- Are you hungry? Oh my god, he's trying to bang. Uh... Yeah. Aw oh man, it's over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are thirsty. I quickly got off of him and picked my clothes up, cradling them to my chest. I I'm going to put my clothes back on, so don't go anywhere, please. The other boy got up slowly, keeping his eyes on the ground and nodding his head lightly. I turned around and, sit and slid my clothes back on as fast as I could. I fumbled a little while tying my shoes up. I half expected the blue-haired boy to be gone when I turned around, but he wasn't. I bet he was staring at her ass. Self-care? Oh my god, thank you. I'm so fucking thirsty. <laughs> Chat, this is a collective self-care. Please have some water. <laughs> Holy shit. Hi, Reaper. How are you? I'm done now. Listen, I'm sorry for jumping on you like that. I'm not trying to hurt you, but you're the only person I've seen alive out here. Uh, my name's Rain. I reached my hand out towards him. He looked down at my open palm and hesitated, but eventually took my hand and shook it. Ah, uh... uh... Fawn. He seems like a bottom chat, and I love it. Fawn? Uh, my name. Oh, Fawn. It's nice to meet you. The items that previously were held tightly in his arms were scattered all over the ground, thrown up in the air when I tackled him. Help him pick them up. I instantly bent down to help him pick up his things. There were clothes in a rainbow of colors. Strange ornaments, glasses without lenses, and an array of random junk. When I handed them back to him, he smiled at me with his tinted red face. Oh, thank you. So, what are all of these things? These? They're from my personal collection. His eyes suddenly lit up. You want to see? Oh, uh, I mean, I have food and water back at my house, but... I could share with you. Really? Are you sure? My hunger and thirst from earlier had returned with a vengeance. I'm starving. Yeah, there's enough for both of us. With his arms full of items to add to his collection, he turned around and started walking. I guess he wanted me to follow after him? I jogged up to walk beside him. So, Fawn, you live here in the forest? By yourself? Oh, yeah. Not far from here. Not by myself, though. I live with a bunch of my friends. Really? You all live out here together? For how long? Uh... He stopped for a couple of seconds before speaking again. He seemed pretty deep in thought. A while now. Helpful. Why did you leave Aurelia Cavella when the Divine Beings don't protect the outside land? What? The speaker says it's too dangerous to even enter the forest, let alone live here. How did you get here? Oh, he's gonna find out there's more to the world. The speaker? Aurelia Cavella? Are you talking about the town to the west of here? Across the river? Bond frowned at me a little, obviously confused by what I was saying. You don't know the speaker? I've never been there before, so... Wait. So, you were born out here? No. I came here as a child. What's up with this guy? Maybe he's delusional from being out here for so long. Uh, alright. Sure. 
I, you know, I can't fault our character for not questioning why he hasn't, like, acknowledged the fact that he said other town or why there's another person out here. Like, I guess if you've been in a cult for a long time, you wouldn't really, you know, question your own sense of self and stuff like that instead of him. I don't know what I'm trying to say, chat. This is really fucking wild, though. I just let it go. It was obvious Fawn didn't know exactly what he was talking about. Oh, it was a treehouse. Before I could ask anything else, we stopped in front of a tall tree with a rope ladder hanging down from it. When I looked up, I could see a small wooden hut set into the trunk. You live in a tree? It's safer to be up high during the night. He gave me a soft smile while he loaded a bag full of his new items and slung it across his back. BRB gonna take Stinky out. Hopefully I don't miss anything spicy. Oh my god, Angle. Take care. I'll see you in a bit. Taking makeup off and getting into comfies, BRB. Okay, Lizzie, enjoy taking off your makeup and getting all comfy. I couldn't help but think about the knapsack from earlier. Best to just try and forget about it. Fawn started climbing up the ladder with ease and waved at me from the top. I guess it's my turn. I grabbed onto the ladder and climbed up after him. I've never had a guy invite me to his treehouse before. Wow. If it looks like this, dude, I would live in a treehouse. That's really cool. When I came up the ladder and into Fawn's treehouse, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It consisted of only one room and a makeshift bed, a couple of chairs, and many other random bits of furniture. That's not what impressed me, though. You collected all of this from the riverbank? Uh, yes. I've been collecting it all slowly over time. Only one bed. And there was only one bed, chat. Get the trope. It's gonna happen. They're gonna bang. He looked so happy with my reaction. The whole room was filled with different colored glass, cloth, old books, and all manners of items. It all blended together to become something that looked magical. Why is the screen shaking? Even though it was abandoned, thrown together items, there was something homely about it. Fawn was busy scurrying around the room, putting things away and dusting. I watched the light trickle in from the outside, and went through the colored glass, making the floor into a rainbow. When he'd finished that, he dug in round in some baskets, before presenting me with a bowl of mixed fruit and nuts and a cup of water. My hunger and thirst from earlier came back with full force. I greedily ate the food and guzzled down the water. All the while, Fawn sat on the opposite side of the room, watching me. He had an inquisitive look in his eyes. He kind of reminded me of the kids back in the orphanage. He obviously wanted to say something. You're the first person I've ever seen out here. And I've lived here for a very long time. Didn't you say you lived with friends? Oh my god, are the animals his friends? I thought you lived with friends, though. Oh, that's what I'm asking. Oh, my friends are actually... Before he could finish speaking, a rustling sound came from outside. It was slowly getting closer, closer until... <laughs> oh my god, he's friends with the animals. I jumped out of my seat. In the door came a fox, a raccoon, two birds, and a few animals I'd never seen before. For some reason, I thought he meant this was the fox, and I'm like, that's a squirrel. <laughs> he's... He's a Disney princess. You're right. Oh my god, I love it. Guys, you're back. I looked over at Fawn. Obviously, this doesn't surprise him. He bent down and pet all of the animals, giving them nuts and berries as he went. I couldn't help but stare at the soft smile he had on his face. Uh, uh, Rain, these are my friends. We've lived together for years now. I'm sorry they gave you a fright. I'll tell them to come in quietly <laughs> next time. That's not really the problem. He leant down further and started whispering to them. You can talk to them? I can take turns of Aki, please. Of course. Sometimes they don't do what I tell them, though. They must be going through a rebellious phase. Oh, so we can't talk to them then. I didn't say anything, though. There's no point upsetting him. 
then I really am the only person you've seen out here. You've been alone since you were a child? Yes. I'm sorry I ran from you. I didn't know what to do when I saw you at the river. You stared at my dick. And it takes me a bit to think through what I'm saying in my head. I'm not used to talking to other people. Honestly, a mood. It's very tough to talk to people. I looked at the floor in embarrassment when I remember jumping on him. Wet and nearly naked. See? That part happened. In the forest, I saw an arm. A dead body. I had to wash it off of myself. That's kind of a weird thing to say when there's one bed involved. You know, chat? I glanced back up at Fawn. I spent the night running and then slept under a tree. I have absolutely no clue where I am. I don't know how you can live here. It's terrifying. He stayed silent for a few seconds. I guess he was thinking through what he was going to say. I can see why you would think that. The forest around here is dangerous, but... He stopped for a moment. It can be beautiful, too. The beauty is hiding danger, but the danger is also hiding beauty. I stared at him. Earlier, I did think it was beautiful for a while. So maybe he's right. Still, I would much rather be back in Aurelia Cavella. I see what you mean, but I'm not looking forward to spending another night out there. I wish there was somewhere else to go. Fawn tilted his head. There's a bunch of places you could go. Oxover, Stagwich, Duskmoor, Sidkeum, Sidkeum? <gasps> Sidkeum? They're all pretty close to here. The last time I checked anyway. Wait, Sidkeum is the name in the book! My ears perked up at the at one of the things Fawn mentioned. Sid Cam? What is that? Uh, it's the... What do you call it? The capital? The capital? The <clears throat> capital of what? Of the region, I suppose. Honestly, I had no clue what he was blathering on about. Capital of the region? What region? Out oh my god, the light changed. Outside, the sun was slowly disappearing and the night was filling up with stars. I stared outside for a moment, dreading going back. Last night, it was terrifying, but what choice do I have? I guess I better head off now, before it gets too dark to see where I'm going. Thank you for the food and water. I don't know what I would have done without you there. No, share the bed. I got up slowly and made my way towards the ladder. Uh, wait... My hand was suddenly clasped from behind before I could start climbing down. Why don't you stay here tonight? We're gonna bang! <laughs> really? Would that be okay? Yeah, my bed's only small, but I can sleep on the floor tonight. It's a small bed. Oh, no, I couldn't. You take the bed. I'm happy to sleep on the floor. It's much better than outside like last night. <laughs> You're gonna sleep on the bed together. They're gonna wake up. We're gonna wake up and it's gonna be a cute scene of us sleeping together. Oh my god. Really, I don't mind. We both looked at each other for a moment before breaking out in laughter. This could go back and forth forever with the two of us. Uh, how about we just share the bed? <laughs> I think we'd both fit. Oh my god! This is fucking Wattpad, and I love it! Fawn lit up again, as red as a rose. Uh, I've never... <gasps> We're gonna be his first? He glanced around, not making eye contact with me, fidgeting and playing with his clothes. Shared a bed with anyone before? Was that something to be embarrassed about? Oh, maybe he's worried that I'll push him out of the bed. Don't worry. I'll make sure not to take up too much room. I grew up in an orphanage, so I'm used to sharing beds and stuff. At the word orphanage, he stopped and looked into my eyes. You didn't know your parents? No. Did you? Hmm. He looked away again. N no. Oh my god, we're bonding. He didn't look like he wanted to talk about it, so I didn't press him. I'm not mad at my parents or anything, though. I had a good family at the orphanage. The judgment I received wasn't particularly good, so that's probably why it happened. Judgment? We both shared another confused look. Like being out here alone really made him forget the most simple things. Yeah, you know, 
the judgment you receive the day you're born from the divine speaker. My fate wasn't very impressive, apparently. You learn your fate the day you're born? Of course. Everyone does. No. They don't do that where I'm from. Yeah, definitely a little confused. Uh, if you're not tired, there's something I'd like to show you. I'm feeling a little tired, honestly, but if he's letting me stay here tonight, then I don't mind following him around, him around for a little while. Sure. I'm not tired anyway. You're fucking lying. His face lit up with a wide, innocent smile filled with excitement. It's not that far from here. Follow me. Fawn basically bounced out of the room, down the ladder, and onto the forest floor. I followed after him, not quite sure where this was headed. I followed Fawn for a few minutes before we stopped at his tracks and peered out between the trees. We're here. Follow me carefully. He started climbing down the shallow slope with ease. I watched him for a moment but came to the conclusion that it didn't look too difficult. Apparently, I was very wrong. <laughs> the ground slipped out from under me, rocks rolling down the slope. Before I could slip over, Fawn reached out and grabbed my hand. Uh, careful! It can be a little slippery here. Keep holding my hand, and we'll go down together. Oh my god, hand-holding before marriage? <laughs> Smash. I watched the ground more carefully this time. Embarrassed that I'd slipped up after he warned me. With Fawn's hand strong against mine, we descended slowly and we eventually got to the bottom of the steep hill. It's here. Look. He parted the last of the tree branches that stood in our way. Whoa. The scene before me was right out of a fairy tale. A large lake was spread out in front of my eyes. The night sky brimming with stars as far as I could see. In the darkness of night, the lake became a mirror. It reflected those stars right back at the sky, not to be outdone. It, it's... it's beautiful. Are we bathing in the sky? What are we doing? I've never seen anything like it. Back home, I never would have known this existed. A million words spun around in my mind, but I didn't know where to start. Who knew something like this could exist? Oh! I sat down with Fawn, entranced by the scene laid out before me. <gasps> we're holding hands! Chat, look, we're holding hands! I thought you might like it. You see, this lake's full of all kinds of fish. Mostly the kind that would like to eat you for dinner. <laughs> huh? He giggled a little, that joy-filled smile returning to his face. But... That doesn't stop it from being beautiful. The world isn't just black and white. There's things in the middle, too. And I think this forest is one of those things. You didn't look very convinced earlier, so... I just wanted to show you that even a dangerous place like this can be somewhere you can call home. It's all about how you look at it, your perspective on things. <sighs> He quickly withdrew his hand from mine. I forgot he was even holding it. This is a pretty big lake, though. It's strange that it's not on the map. I haven't seen a map in a while, so I'm not sure. He was crimson red from the top of his ears to his chin, like a tomato. Silently, we sat side by side. We watched the fish just below the surface, the stars that almost seemed to dance around us. But... Secretly, I watched Fawn's profile. The moon made his pale skin look even paler, as if he were glowing. Oh my god, we're staring at him, chat. Oh! Maybe it's a strange thought, but it was almost as if he was part of the forest. He fit in perfectly, as much as the trees, the fish, the stars. He belonged. When he caught me staring, he looked away in embarrassment. Uh, anyway, let's head back now. It'll start to get cold soon. Oh my god. Right. I'll try not to slip over this time. Yeah, right. We're gonna fall on him. As soon as we got back, a wave of exhaustion passed over me. Without delay, I started preparing for bed. Everything caught up to me at once. It really had been a long day. 
I rolled up my sleeve and looked at the markings that ran down my arm. I suppose there's no point in hiding it from them, is there? He's bound to find out one way or another, and I feel like I can trust him. Hey, Fawn? He looked over at me with sleepy eyes. I wanted to show you something. Yesterday, when I was still in Aurelia Cavella, it suddenly appeared on my arm. It hurt, like it was being burnt into my skin. I lifted up my arm to show it to him. This? I've seen this writing somewhere before. With speed, he rushed to my side and grabbed my arm. He brought it close, examining my markings. Before I was here, I've definitely seen this somewhere. I watched him excitedly, but to no avail. No matter how hard he thought, it wasn't coming back to him. I'm sorry, how did it happen? I'm not sure. One minute I was in a crowd of people completely fine, and then I was suddenly in so much pain, I blacked out. And when I woke up, it was there. Maybe it's not important. He what? I mean, like, literally, it showed up out of nowhere, and you don't know what it says. He doesn't know what it is. Clearly, it's important. He watched me carefully, thinking. It sounds important to me. Right? I'll keep thinking about it. Maybe it'll come back to me in the morning, after we rest. Turn around while I get ready for bed. Oh! Oh boy, chat. Fawn got into bed first and hid himself under the covers, quickly. I shuffled in next to him. It was a tight squeeze, seeing as the bed was only made for a single person. But we had enough space to avoid touching. Well, we should touch, you know? I scooted over further, giving him some more room. Why are you out here, anyway? Fawn glanced at me from over his shoulder, back still facing me. I... Uh, they... I tried to think up an excuse. Anything would do, really. But there wasn't any to give. I got exiled. I went somewhere I shouldn't have gone. Honestly, I thought I'd be dead by now. We've always had it drilled into us that you can't survive out here. But for some reason... It's not quite as bad as I thought it would be. Fawn smiled at me sleepily, before turning back over and drifting off to sleep. It didn't take long for me to follow after him. We're gonna wake up cuddling. Please, 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 please. Open your eyes. Yes, mother. Protect. Heal. Yes. Destiny. Child. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. <laughs> 